a lot of people have been asking me to put together a video where I tie in the scouting to the hunting to show the results so you can see what you get out of your scouting. So in this video, we're going to briefly show the scouting and then the first hunts in that spot. You're going to see right away that if you're going to hunt this way, that you're going to need a lot of spots because it doesn't really work out as well as planned a lot of the time. Our quest is to shoot a big mature buck in a highly pressured area. This isn't Kansas or Iowa and it ain't a $7,000 lease. It ain't easy. This first spot is a spot where I do deer drives every year and we always seem to shoot does and maybe the occasional little buck comes out. But there's a lot of big buck sign and we found a few big dead bucks in there. But we never see them at the timing of gun season. It seems like gun season always hits a little after those deer have left. And I thought, you know, early season and, and pre-rut would probably be pretty good for this area. There's a parking lot um, right behind me here that is within uh, within 100 yards of both spots I'm looking at within 100 yards of the bedding and nobody really comes over here the parking lot leads them out into some public and this just doesn't even look like it's part of the public and it's <sighs> so really looking at this roads beside me here there's an exit going this way and an exit going that way and pretty much without going right into danger that's the only way he's in and out of here so this is a pretty good spot to um, really hunt. There's two ways in and out. A guy can hunt both ends in two days and cover this if there's a deer in here. So all that bedding is all out in here like this. This is that point coming up out of the water going up a little narrow ridge. Pretty tight down here at the bottom with not much for trees. All the only big trees are ash and they're dead so it's gotten thick at ground level. But you see several trails meeting here and going up the ridge and I'm sure there's a couple that come from over there because there's some good bedding over there what we want to do is get up here where it all kind of comes together and see if we can find a setup someplace where we can get a shot off this is the top of the ridge everything should come together right here I would think and sure enough here's a beet trail that looks more like a buck trail Nice and open for them. There's big piles of poop on them. That's some big poop. So that's the center of that rub is chest high. And I'm six foot two. There's marks here, marks here. Look at this stuff. All these branches broken off here. Tine marks. I'm six foot two. This is uh, pretty cool. And there's another one right there that is just like this one. Definitely some big bucks in here in pre-rut. That's what the sign's telling me. See a couple old scrapes, a lot of rubs. And every time we uh, we hunt this during gun season, we see a lot of does in here. So I have to think pre-rut, the bucks are in here. So uh, we've got the time frame. We got the uh, exit out of both sides of the uh, bedding. And now it's just a matter of the right winds and hunt it at the right time. So here's my tree, right behind this cedar tree. There's an opening right up there. The tree will give me cover from deer coming from that way. And this little opening up here, I got an open shot right to it. Came back to hunt this spot in mid-September and found that I couldn't quite get into the tree that I wanted to get in, the one that we picked out because of the wind direction for one, and number two, the way leaf cover had grown in and blocked some of the shooting. So I had to set up about 10 or 15 yards over from that tree. I'm on, I'm on a point that goes out into a little swamp, and there's really good bedding out in there. This is one of the spots that I found while we were doing deer drives. Eric shot a little buck on the back side of this. And in spring, I set up a spot here and a spot on the other side. Um, there's a few oaks in here. A couple right here dropping. And these are the last oaks before we get to the swamp. Uh, it is 
concerning that there's a little bit of a, like a sub point over there and there's a lot of sign coming out of there as I came back here. But I stuck to the plan. Uh, rat Slayer's across the street. I kind of wish he would have came with me because I think if he was over there, for sure we'd see everything that comes out of here. It is dead silent. They're going to be kind of quiet. There's somebody encroaching me over there with a 22, like a squirrel hunter or something. Maybe he's just plinking because he's shooting an awful lot. But there's a swamp. Did you hear him? There's a swamp in between us. I don't think he can really get through that swamp unless he's a nut job. But uh, we're only 100 yards from the parking lot. This is kind of an overlooked spot. Here are the cars. My stand was really close to some private properties and really there was a backyard very close to me. It's a small little tiny overlooked area. And that house that was right next to me just decided that that day they were going to have a party and have a garage band going on the day I was hunting there. Prime time and the band's just starting. One of the benefits of hunting in people's backyards. This guy's house is right on the edge of the public. It's 200 yards from me. Looks like he's having a little party in his garage. Now that was enough to make me lose faith in the spot to some degree, but I sat there to closing time anyways, knowing that a lot of times those bucks are used to that when they're living in a backyard. So I sat faithfully till dark but right at closing time, as I was taking my stuff down, a deer had crept up underneath me and crashed off without me ever hearing it come in. But when it crashed off, I turned around, I just got a glimpse, and I'm not sure if it was a buck, a doe, or what. But it was a lone deer and a big deer. But what deer, I have no idea. Two weeks later, I was driving past that same little woodlot on my way to work at 3.15 in the morning and had to stop my truck for a giant eight-pointer walking across the street going into that bedding area. Now it was three in the morning, but I still felt it was going in there staging to bed because it's kind of a dead-end area. Uh, I had never seen this eight-pointer before and it was a big buck, definitely a shooter. This morning, I saw a really good buck come into here, and I know this area. I don't know the buck. It was a real big eight-pointer, but I know the area they came out of. And I'm following this trail back in here. He came in like a, about two hours before daylight, so I'm hoping he's bedded in here, but he could have gone through. But there really ain't a lot out here. But uh, getting here, here's a rub that's still tacky. Now that's the... That's the kind of sign we're looking for, not the dried up rubs that we've been finding. We hunted here once a couple weeks ago, and right at closing time, I was getting my stuff packed, and a deer crashed off from right here. It got into the opening, and I never heard it because it was closing time and I was packing down. But I was trying to be quiet, but it caught me right here in the tree and bolted off back into the bedding area. And when I came in here, spring scouted. There are beds all over out there and uh, we found a dead 10-pointer out there. Um, 
Eric shot a buck in there during a drive. We're pretty certain that most of the activity in this area is early season. The acorns that were up here are kind of done. That was that first hunt. There's none up here. There could be some down there. But this is a point that goes out into that bedding area. And down over the hill here is a little oak flat. And that has a lot of travel into it too. But I kind of determined this was the better area right here. But I hunted here and spooked something. The good part is if it gets calm, something enters there, it doesn't come over here. It's upwind to me and I should hear it go through. Now the reason we're in here it's because about 500 yards that way, I watched a big eight-pointer come in here out of a cornfield and enter this area a couple hours before daylight. It really kind of bottoms out here into this bedding area. And I wouldn't doubt it if he's bedded in here right now. I've never seen that buck before, and I'd like to shoot him. Now, if the buck comes into this flat down here, and this point was the main point, there's a flat down there that they can also go into. And there's trails on both sides coming to meet up there. And I was really tempted to go down there since I haven't hunted that yet. It'd be a first sit. But I know this is the main travel route here. I don't want to get too aggressive. If it's calm out, I should hear something that's over there. And hopefully, if he does go through there, it does the same thing again tomorrow. <laughs> I was glassing the cattails and something caught my peripheral and I looked over and there's a big buck right here. And he came out right here. And I didn't have my bowl in my head, my glasses. I put my glasses down. I never heard him or anything. I got the bowl. It just says about the draw. He caught me. I never got the camera on. He trotted off through there. Definitely a shooter. I was going to put an arrow in him. It's like you gotta stand here with the bow ready at all times. Does that suck? Well, yeah. at least I got a chance. It's right there, eight yard. He ran off that way. He didn't run hard, but he looked right up at me as I started to draw. I heard him go like this and circle around me and go right into there and then go up, which was the secondary spot I was going to sit, where I was trying to decide which side to sit on. And if Eric would have came out hunting today, he'd have been over there or I'd have been over there. One of us had been over here. That would have been funny because uh, if he was over there, he'd have shot that buck because of my mistake. And I could clearly hear her going through the cattails. So he'd have had good warning when I didn't. That thing was quiet. I just looked in there and right in those bushes there, I saw its uh, white patch on its neck it was rubbing its antlers and head in the bushes and then the wind, I didn't hear it. But before I can get everything set up completely, he'd already walked out. And I found this little piece that is in an area that gets pretty pounded and uh, a lot of pressure on the surrounding properties. And the surrounding properties are really huge and very attractive to hunters. But this one was a little piece off to the side, where I think everybody kind of ignored because they're going to look at that big piece. And it had a lot of grass and pine trees you had to walk through to get back to this point. Otherwise, this is kind of landlocked back here. And what I liked about back here is once I got through all that, you know, nothing land, where everybody else hunts, I hit a creek that was pretty deep. Had to cross that creek to get back here. And this is dense swamp. Coming through that stuff back here, it is a tangle. What keeps a lot of people out of here is this floating bog. I mean, if you look at this, we're actually on an underground lake. And uh, you'll poke a leg through every now and then. And that'll keep people out of here. They don't like walking when the ground's wobbling around underneath them, but the deer don't mind it at all. You look, there's rubs back here all over the place, more up there. And these are all game trails from the deer. So this is what is going to keep those people out of there and attract me to this. 
because this has the ingredients to grow deer old because people just aren't going to come back here. Oh, that bowl in the middle of the tamarack swamp is right over here behind us, about uh, 150 yards that way. We're in a pretty isolated area that's got a lot of uh, buckthorn and some elm and maple, but no oak or anything, real low, wet, muddy. But there's a heavy amount of trails right in here. And this little openish area in this woods that's still pretty thick, but open enough for a buck to get through, that kind of parallels everything. Where I would think those bucks would be cruising through here. More than just rut, I think they'd be in here all the time. And this kind of leads towards crop fields. So anything bedding back there that wants to get the crop fields in the dark is going to come through here. And there's literally, I mean, there's a heavy trail here, heavy trail over there. And there's trails coming in from every direction here, all meeting here. And then moving up this funnel, heading towards the crops. I think both rut and when they're feeding on those crops, this is going to be a good area. So all those trails seem to come together right here as a pinch point, real thick over there, real thick over there. And everything kind of comes together right here. And I think I need to get into one of these trees right over here. And I can cover this pretty good. And I think this will cover all this. And then we can uh, mark a trail back to that uh, floating bog. And I think uh, this would be pretty good. What do you think of this? Yeah, I think this is great. I just, there's, I don't see any way they're really traveling through some of this stuff right here. It's just coming to a wall of cover. Right, and you can see how the deer are coming around that cover. Right. right through this little opening following the trail that they've busted for years. Mm -hmm. I don't see any human sign in here at all. Yeah. Yeah, not a tinks bottle, not a coke bottle, not a beer can, not a bullet shell. Yeah, not even a branch snapped or cut or anything like that. Right, you go down the trails and the trails look just like beat like a human trail, but there's branches going across where a human would break it. You can get that west wind blowing right over that thick. I mean, look at this, this wall of thick. Right, there's no so way. There's no deer coming through that. So if we get over the top of that and shoot into here, we can come in from over there, mm -hmm. shoot over the top of it, and there's no deer that can ever sense us. I mean, you could actually hunt something like this multiple times. Right. Because the deer got to get over there to smell you. Especially when you find an obstacle like that to shoot over. In this spot, I did my first hunt in early September. And just like the last spot, I could not get into the tree that I had intended to get into because of the wind direction, mainly. So I had to circle this whole entire area and come in from a different direction and be on the other side of the trails. So again, you can just scrap the tree that we scouted, but the same spot. I'm in a spot I scouted this spring. It's a big bowl of a swamp that's way out in the middle of a public property that just looks like grass fields. It doesn't get much pressure. I was hoping to catch deer coming out of the bedding, going towards the few oaks that are over there. All I saw was that one young buck and a couple does. This is the same area, but not the same spot. And I scouted this when we were out there scouting, but didn't film any of it, didn't make any notes, because it just didn't look all that great. But it was something to keep in the back of my mind as an area to keep a watch on. Didn't look killer, it didn't look like a spot I really wanted to hang my hat on. But I thought, eh. It could have some potential because of oaks and stuff like that that were congregated in there and some bedding. So when I go back and I hunt these spots, I have a place in, in mind. But on the way back, I tend to scout my way in. Because I've always felt that hot sign is better than a pre-scouted spot. You notice a lot of these spots, you get in there and you're like a week off or something. You know, oh, the sign's old, the sign's dry. And you're going to kind of see that throughout this video. So when I hit hot sign, you know, scouting my way in, not taking the point A to point B path like everybody else does, checking things out along the way, I found some good sign and followed it back. Well, I had a destination in mind, but being the person I am, I can't just walk from point A to point B, so I'm scouting my way back. And I've already walked this, I walked this in spring, and it looked okay, but it didn't look like it was on fire. But there is a very thick area in front of me here, up against a bowl of cattails, up against a golf course or something. And back here, 
and uh, that is just thicker than heck. You can hardly even walk through that in the spring, more or less now. But coming back here, I took this uh, little tree line in the middle of open grass. And by, by little, I mean little. I mean, it was a tree every 20, 30 yards, but giant oaks. And I wanted to see if there's deer coming and eating the acorns, and that tree line leads them to a very green, green field. And there really wasn't nothing for acorns. But I ran into a giant rub, fresh, still bleeding. 30 yards up, I ran into a scrape that looks like it was worked this morning. So then I followed that back and knew it had to come out of here someplace. I kind of lost the trail up in the crazy thick stuff behind me. But when I got down to here, which is a natural where it should be coming from because there's a bigger bowl of bedding and brush and stuff back there. This grass is just all matted down and torn to pieces. And back in here, all of this julep is bitten off, chewed off, mowed down over there. It's mowed almost to the ground. And you know, I don't, I don't know. The orange julep looks like it was done a couple weeks ago. But it looks like the deer is still going through here. I think you're probably heading more to acorns and stuff, but gosh, I have a hard time just walking past this. I, that rubble was pretty big, the tracks were pretty big. I think I gotta give this a sit. Look at all this uh, stuff being bit off here. I mean, it's eating up pretty high. There ain't much for trees in here, but I can get in that little tiny tree, I think, right there. And then I can cover all of this. Oh look, a puffball. Looks like we're eating tonight. Nice, it looks like a good one. Nice small one, big enough for me and Jamie. The rat slayer. Nice. It's right on the deer trail. Yeah, it's a good one too. It's nice and firm. Small, but good. I don't see any more. Oh, there's one starting right there. That's too small though. If I come back through in a couple days, I think it'll probably be huge. Because this one still has some growing to do. But it's big enough for me. You look at this twisted up tree. And that little hole with that little flat area. I can get up there and sit. There's no way I'd have done that out of a saddle. And that's 90% of my trees. It's not that I'm knocking saddles. That's what a lot of people think. I'm just saying that I don't know how they can hunt like I do out of a saddle. I came back here intending to go to a spot where I could have used a saddle. It was a spot with straight trees. But I scouted my way in and I found this. And if I had a saddle, I don't know if I could have hunted this. And then if you leave and come back, they come through and they smell you were here. So I mean, once I'm here, I gotta hunt this or abandon it. Anywho, I feel good about this spot tonight. We'll see. We'll see if this uh, complete randomness of a new spot stumbling into it is uh, gonna be good. But the sign looks good. The idea that they're bedding right here looks good. And there's a real good oak flat right up there. Like a little ridge of oaks. And that's the most oaks and the most acorns in this whole area. Otherwise, there's just a random tree every now and then. That's a good area. So I would have to think it's drawing deer through here. And the sign's kind of showing it. I've walked through this scouting this spring. And it looked okay, but didn't look like it was on fire or anything. But what intrigued me was those oaks over there. That whole ridge back there is oaks. And I thought, wow, those oaks are dropping. This could hold some deer, and there's a sign that it held deer. And I thought, well, maybe it's every other year, you know, when the oaks are here. I don't know. And I think, I'm pretty sure that that uh, golf course over there does not allow hunting. So, uh, Probably got some big bucks floating in and out of that. 
So we'll see. If you look at all this grass, it's matted down and tore up in here. There's trails coming in like this, right here, and then a whole bunch of trails going off that way. You see little holes where the deer come out and enters, tore up stuff. There's another one right there. That looks like the main one right there. Right there. There's another one right behind this branch here and up there. The wind's not ideal. You know, um, but the sign's here. So, I mean, you've got to hunt it. I come in here, I got my scent in here, I got it all over by the scrape, by the rub. And I feel like I need to take it a hunt. So you just set up the best you can. Literally with a wrong wind, this is the best tree I can get into. Pretty much the only one. And when the deer come out of here, my wind is going like that. It is just off. And I think the deer are bedding in that brush. So I need to shoot them right away because it just takes one little off current. Here, I'll show you what I mean. Yeah. That wind is going like that. Right there, it's going straight out. And I'm expecting those bucks to pop out right in here. I need to be ready to shoot them when they come out. I mean, I'm thinking the wind should turn and go a little bit more this way by nightfall. But either way, I just gotta make it happen as soon as, as, soon as I can when those deer pop out. So I can feel the air on the back of my neck. So I wanted to check the wind direction. And I find this interesting, watch this. It's going to go straight out. It gets about 10 feet from the trees and it's going to turn. Yep, and now it's going that way. So the terrain is pulling it that way. The wind the current is hitting those trees over there and turning the wind. So my scent is never getting to those trees. They all do it. As soon as it gets out there, about right here should turn. There it goes. As soon as it hits that spot, it turns. Just goes to show you, just because the wind's one way at your stand does not mean it's that way 20 yards from your stand. I feel real confident about, about it now because I can't get one milkweed to make it over to those holes. That light current coming down the hill. It's more of a thermal coming down this hill. It's getting down to this bottom and then it's following this opening down into the big opening. It's never going over by those holes. So as long as I don't get that deer in it into 10 yards, I'm fine. So we're going to check out this little island here and some of the little patches of trees. They all kind of connect out in these cattails and this is really remote. This is probably we think we are a little over two miles now yeah that's two miles here. out and uh when i've hunted out here i've seen hunters everywhere around here except for in here so it's probably worth looking at i don't even during gun season i've never really seen anybody in this patch yeah it certainly i think is in a pretty ambitious spot to get into yeah it'd be a pretty serious hunter to get in here Hopefully. i mean we're standing in the middle of the lake yeah i'm hoping that we can get over there it looks like there's a little flow going through here i can see like a little creek going through the middle of this hopefully we can hop over it so we're on that island and it's grass and high ground, all willow trees. And it's completely surrounded by cattails of water. And I'm not seeing any human sign at all and I wouldn't expect to. But then those cattails are this high. This is a little oasis. Mm -hmm. uh, and this trail's real heavy. We're seeing fresh deer tracks everywhere. I think we need to walk around and figure this out, but I don't think this looks bad. What do you think? I agree. I, I really like the look of this spot. I think hole. Wow, a good bed. Look at that. That is just pounded down. Holy cow. I think we found something here. Right there. Look at that bed. Yeah. You pointed it before I did. Gosh, you could even be bedding up here. Yeah. Every one of these bushes, dude.
just one after another. This place is just rubbed up like crazy. What this is, in case you guys don't know, is this is an island of just slightly higher ground in the middle of a giant swamp. You know, this is completely surrounded by water and we are miles from public access. Mm -hmm. So um, this is just very, very remote. And what we're finding is that these huge bucks that we're finding are either extremely remote or they're right under people's noses, mm -hmm. one or the other. It's like the in-between stuff is the stuff that sucks. It's remote, but it also, in some sense, I, I believe could be called an overlooked spot. Yeah. Your average guy ain't gonna hunt this right either. He ain't gonna right. find us. He's gonna come in here. If he did find it, he'd stumble in here and go into the middle of it. But we're, we're looking at this and we're figuring out, well, where can we get at this without spooking these deer out here? Because I would imagine when this is being used, there's probably 50 deer in here. And then you walk in here wrong and you're gonna skick them out of here. Yeah. You know, we're already starting to put two and two together, where we gotta be, how mm -hmm. we gotta hunt this. I mean, this is what, what do you think we have here of uh, bedding? We have probably about uh, a three acre bedding area. Yep. About three acre accurate. bedding area. Yep. That is full of beds everywhere. Yeah, they're everywhere. Yeah, I kind of like that tree over there, honestly. So it's just a matter of being able to get in there without spooking. So we got to remember these cattails are just high, so you get away with a little. Because those beds are, a lot of those beds are right under those bushes, right? Yeah. I think you got to pick the old Dan, honestly. I don't see a lot of other options out here. I think when this has got leaf cover, we can get right there. This is going to be a low stand, right? Yes. Two sticks, yeah, two three sticks. sticks. Two sticks. And uh, we can shoot right into there. We don't have to clear anything out or anything like the that. The only thing I would be concerned about is something sneaking out right up through this way, but... Um, I think we can cover anything coming out of there. Now, what is so nice about this too is if we can get up this thing on this side of the tree, so we're not spooking the deer over there, right? Yep. So right up here, you cut a little hole, we can hit that too. And there's a lot of deer sign up in that grass there. True. There's little holes in the cattails. You see that? Mm-hmm. Yep. So I think we're gonna have to stand right up here. We just have a little shooting lane out there and one over there, and I think this covers just about everything. And if one does come through over there, we should see it. We should get a glimpse of it. And then, he can make and then we move. can move. Yep. And we yep. come in from straight that way. And I don't think any deer that goes that way will even know we were here. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're absolutely right about that. Yeah. So I think this is our tree. Let's mark this one and then move on and find something else. Cool. I slid in. A bedding area that I scouted this spring. This is a really good spot. I ran into beds already right here and some sign. Not as heavy as I would have thought, but I kind of think they might be in the oaks right now, and this is pretty far removed from the oaks. But I wanted to get a hunt in here and just uh, get a feel for it and see if there's anything in here right now that's traveling from here to the oaks. This is a pretty aggressive move. I'm right in the beds, which is why I didn't show any setup or anything. I literally took about 30 minutes to get into this spot and another 30 minutes to get up the tree. I'm about a mile from my axis. It's a pretty long walk out here. But uh, there was a fresh bed right back here. This trail's coming through here. This trail come through there that's fresh. And when I scouted, the main trail came right through there. And into that opening there. The beds are right underneath those bushes out there. And out here. There were literally, when I scouted this, hundreds of beds in here and most of them had big rubs in them so uh, the sign doesn't show that there's that kind of activity in here yet which is okay I'll do my hunt and if I don't see nothing I'll slide out of here and then I'll, uh, I'll come back a little closer to pre-rut 
more into October, probably mid-October, and give this a hunt. It looks like this would be a way better spot to hunt in the morning, despite the long walk in the dark to get out here, because getting in here is almost impossible without getting seen or heard. Just climbing this tree, all I have to do is be standing or look this direction. I was really surprised at all the spots in this spot not seeing a deer. But I was probably a little early. Most of the sign I seen scouting was rut sign. So a trip back in mid-October or late October might have different results. This next spot is in the same area as the spot we just hunted, but a different section. And we hunted this last year, and Eric had a spike go by, and I seen a little deer, and we never really got on anything, and we felt like we needed to scout up a little further, get a little more towards the point. There's a, there's a little timber point that comes off straight in front of us, and that meets with swamp, but there's also another timber point probably 100 yards past this one. So. Um, the deer trails clearly show that these deer are using that as a funnel, mm -hmm. um, but I know that there's also bedding up there too. So, um, but I, when I hunted in here, I did I did make my way up to here, and I can't remember for what reason I decided I couldn't make it work at the time. I don't know if it was the wind or what it was. I ended up backtracking like 75 yards behind me, but um, really every everything that point funnels all these deer coming right up that point. Yeah, every trail comes to here and then spreads out. Yep. And then we also have some white oaks in here too. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't beyond here. You get beyond here right. and it just dump, dumps into swamp. These are the last white oaks off yeah. of this point. Um, but there's a lot, there's always good buck tracks in here. There's good buck sign. I've sat here and seen a buck. So I think this is something that uh, we have to give a shot at this year again. Let's take a look at the, the trails that are coming through and stuff that are coming off of that point. Noticing lots of browse. This is a uh, uh, buckthorn here they're eating. Lots of buckthorn here being mowed down. Oh, here's a good trail where you're standing, right? Yep. I would think this would be the main artery. No, I'm willing to bet there's a real good one over there, too. Over there, right along there, yep. Yeah. Look at all the leaves are off of this branch here. They ate every one of them along the trail. Mm -hmm. Right off the side of the tree here, that's kind of browsed. Yeah, down. look at that. Oh, it's all browsed deer head range. Yep. Yeah. And we got oaks above us that are uh, loaded with acorns. Mm -hmm. There's fresh poo. Oh yeah, and here's the jewel weed all mowed down. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, you can just see the trails through here. And that all comes together on that point. Let's look at the trail over here. Oh, look at this, dude. Look at all this jewel weed. Just oh, every man. plant is gone. Yep. Yeah, this trail looks bumbled. The closer we get to this trail over here, the more this jewel weed is just mowed down. Hey, look at this, dude. Yep. Looks like cattle been running this trail. And it's just pummeled. Uh, pounded in pretty good. I wonder if there's another trail up against uh, the grass up over here. Yeah. Look at that track. I might fit my whole hand in that. Uh, this is, uh, Everything comes together right here. Looking nice. oh, we're getting right up into the swamp, and we are past the last oak, I believe. So, um, I think it's a good spot. We just... Um, Show me where the trails are. Yeah, so, I have a trail here coming right off that point, leading off of that point. We have another really heavy trail five yards in front of us here. And I would believe we didn't walk up there, but I would almost guarantee there's another trail right, that right along that transition yep. on that edge there. So we kind of have to start with something in the middle, right? Um, so that we have shooting to all of these. And um, I kind of like that dead ash tree right in the middle of- So what is that, like uh, 18 so yards from here? So take 18 or 19 yards. And that's the furthest shot. No, it is a dead tree, but I bet you get a season out of it. Yeah. It actually looks like 
you got a little bit of growth coming out of it, so it'd be an early season hunt, but... Um, I like it. It's nice, too, because we could access from over there. We don't have to walk through the woods where I think some of the deer might come from behind us because right. of the way bedding works out. Come in through that grass. But I do know that I've walked into here and had big bucks jump up there on a couple occasions. I've only been back here a few times, but I've seen it happen. And seen some really big sign in here last year, so I don't think this is a bad option. I think you made a good pick. Yeah. I, um, I feel better about this than that back there. I think back there we're just a little too far back, in my own personal opinion. Yeah, okay. I pre-scouted this spot last year with uh, Eric. We hunted it last year, then pre-scouted it last year, found a little better spot. And um, you have to go across a deep canal. And this year the canal's dried up and you see all the big buck tracks in it. And there was a couple sets of human tracks going through on the big buck tracks. And now I'm getting close to where I want to hunt and I just spotted a crossbow bolt on the ground that's fresh. Looks like a mess. Hmm. Not too sure if I want to hunt this now. But uh, the spot I want to hunt is up further. But where this arrow is laying, they almost had to be hunting where I hunted last year. Really, he, really he on around about whether or not to hunt here because of the hunter sign. But that was you know, 250, 300 yards back. These trails do lead over there, but they also lead other places. So it's a little bit uh, frustrating, but uh, this does have a hell of a lot of sign. And there was only one set of tracks coming in and out of here, so the guy shot and missed. And uh, who knows what he shot at. He's not even capable of hitting it. Maybe he's shooting at those. I have no idea. But there's a real heavy trail right here. There's some heavy trails over there. And uh, the brows back here on this uh, stinging nettles is insane. I noticed some oak trees in here. I don't know if they're dropping. I didn't want to wander around and check. The sign on the trails is fresh. I just don't know how far they're coming. If they're getting in here in daylight or not. And it is really hot, like 80s. I think I'm just gonna set up and give it a shot. This place has come full circle. This used to be an ash point. The kind that we, uh, in the old days used to kill all the bucks on the ash points. It was the only tree that grew this far out into the water. And uh, now all the ash are dead, so I'm sitting in the dead ash. But for a long time when ash died, these points were just barren. As you can see when these trees die, it would just be grass. But buckthorn came in, the invasive species, and took over. And now these points are green again and you can hunt them again. It's just strange the buckthorn is just taking over everything. There's the uh, main trail right here. It's not a very good setup. They're going to be a point blank. And that's like uh, seven yards or less maybe. Maybe five. Kind of quartering two, but I can go right down into the back. That's a much better trail if they come down that to broadside. But this is about all I got over here. Unless I set up 300 yards back where that dude was. But I know this point goes into a swamp and they bet right in the other point. I stuck my nose out over there one time, um, scouting, and a big bug jumped up off that other point. So I know they bet right there, at least sometimes. I know I got oaks behind me and they're really concentrating on oaks. And I believe they're white oaks. But I didn't go over by them, I didn't go check underneath them or any of that. I just tried to scramble to the tree real quick and get set up. Which good thing, because now it's after five, it took me a little while to get in here. Hopefully something still shows after that guy's been in here. I would have really been pushing my time limits to hit another spot and then I, uh, you know, you can ruin a spot. 
I only get so many chances. And I'm not convinced that those bucks aren't still in here. There's some really nice tracks on those trails. But one thing that's got me is they kind of look like they're coming from the other direction. Because that trail coming out of here, going into the swamp, is just busted into that swamp. And what would they do in that swamp other than bed right now? There ain't a lot of food out there. There's a lot of food right in here. Between the brows, the buckthorn leaves, the, uh, the stinging nettles, the orange julep, the acorns. This is where the food is, so this is where they're feeding. So if those trails go back into that open swamp, I think they're bedding back there. And I got an idea where they're at. So when this doesn't pan out, that's going to be in the back of my mind how to set up on that. I got an idea where they're coming from. Not enough time right now though, so we'll give this a sit. I did not see a deer on this hunt either. By the time the hunt was over, I was completely convinced that that heavy trail I saw coming in and out of there, out of the swamp, was where those deer were coming from. And the sign I was looking at in that point was night sign. And to top it, my son James had seen a big 10 pointer come in and out of there, going towards the swamp where the bedding would be that this trail's coming out of. So that led me to going back further into that swamp to a different spot we had scouted that spring. As we got up to the island, Eric goes, I bet you we're gonna kick deer off this island. There's a lot of fresh sign. All of a sudden deer start jumping up. This one jumped up right in these cattails here, but it jumped up right in front of us here, right, right here someplace. And then another one, when, when it took off from inside of there after it stopped, another one jumped up. But from over there, this looked like a real thin tree line. Yep. And when we came in, we had picked out that tree from a distance. Mm -hmm. It looked like a good tree, but as we get up here, we see all these trails. They're they're closer together up here, and it would be a much better hunt from up here. And there's no bedding in here, so just back a little ways from the island, I think we're going to be end up being 75 yards from the island. We're not going to be in that tree back there. Right. Right. But I do think there's some potential of the deer going around out that way too. And two guys could hunt this at the same time and get in a willow over there or something and over here and we have to look over there yet first to make sure but it does seem to have the potential for two people to hunt this at once a lot of good historical hit all over the yeah. place look at how high that, that historical one over there yeah. is in that one wow Unreal. yeah look at this jeez man Trees and there's trails through here everywhere. Yeah, you see there's trails going back into here too. I wonder if they're bedding the cattails sometimes too. Yep. If there's some high spots out there. Oh, but yeah. I don't see any trees. There's some trees over there we gotta look at, but yeah, there are some singular trees out there, but I don't know how close we're getting to that next. Oh look at this. Oh huh. stand by that once. Holy Holy Schnikes is what I would say. Wow, that's a that's a big rub, dude. It is. And that's coming. Right down this transition. Right down problems. the trail. Yeah. That one's been hit too. It's got a little bit of bark move, removed. Sure. Wow, good slow. It ain't bad. It's about 20 yards to the to the furthest trail, right? Yeah. Yep. So we're gonna stand right here. We'll be right into the nest and stuff. I just, I want to get a peek at, there's that last tree that comes off of the tip yeah. out there. I want to take a look at that. You'd rather get point. in there a little bit? I, I, I'm just I, I would, about I would, early season and I don't think we want to get right in there. Yeah, see I would plan on hunting this around rut time. Yeah, I think that this has some um, potential for early season too though. Yeah, right. Rut, I think you're right, we move in. We can't really hunt it early since we don't have a tree set up because I think you got to have a hole in this. I yeah, no, I think you're right. Place. I think you have to get in here early season. There's definitely potential out here. So, I mean, you could put a stand right here, cut a couple branches off. Two you sticks. You can shoot all of this mm -hmm. and you can get into this fairly easy. And then we could have a guy over there on the other side of the beds back there. And the two of us could hunt this together. And if it don't work out, you come in for rut, move in further. Right. Unfortunately, Eric wasn't able to make it on this hunt, but when I went in there, 
I again didn't end up in a tree where I thought I'd be. I ended up over a little ways because the sign was over a little ways. The tree that I intended to go to was 40 yards over. So I'm navigating way back into one of the spots that me and Eric scouted in spring. And uh, last night I hunted further inland where there's some oaks where I thought the deer would be because there's some good bedding over there. And there was sign galore but no deer. And then coming out, I spooked deer going in from out of here. And I know that this was on fire but I just expected a little later. And then this morning going to work, there's a road that goes through this section of marsh, and this is the first bedding area from that road. And right before daylight, my son James saw a giant 10-pointer come in here, uh, walk across the road in front of him. And I get back here, and I'm sneaking up on the bedding area, and look at this scrape. Look at that. I don't think something little did that. That is ripped up. So, so far we haven't spooked any deer. But we're just starting to get into the stuff that where they bed. And uh, the trouble is, uh, last night when I spooked those deer coming out of here, there was a whole pile of does. So I hope I don't get buried in does that are spooking because wherever I set up, the deer are going to get around me. Hopefully, it's just Mr. Big. But uh, we'll deal with whatever's thrown at us. And here's another scrape right in the tree, the trail, with a big broken branch hanging down. And the trail still goes up this way. I'm thinking I might not get exactly where I wanted to. I might want to just hunt just up here, just outside of the brush. And uh, if he goes through further in, I should be able to see him. But I think about where these trees start getting thick. I'm going to set up. I'm going to have a pretty good view of where I was going to set up. That is, if I like what I see when I get over there. But... I don't think I want to get too far into this. That's not to say I'm not already a mile back, but I want to just, I think, hold back a little bit on this spot. At least that's my preemptive thought. Because all this sign tells me that buck's coming this way, so if I get up against the thick stuff, I don't think I want to go over there and cut him off. That'll be my next move if this doesn't pay off, because there's an awful lot of sign right here. Got a little further up more scrapes still coming out of that crap. Some old rubs and there's a fresh one right there. A historical one right on the trail. I'm liking this. All right I got set up. I'm in this little willow tree. I'm two sticks up. The trail goes from that tree over there to that tree and past. There's a scrape over there, a scrape over there, a scrape back there, a huge rub over there all along that trail. I put my cell cam right there for now. And uh, I know there's some trails from history from last year's scouting going through over there. Actually, this spring scouting, but um, I don't know if they're going to be in reach, but I think some of them will be. Uh, I should have a good view, though. Two sticks up. The trail goes through right there, the main one. It's coming out of these cattails in that little island. And uh, I know there's some trails that come out over here too. Uh, that tree right there is about 30 yards away. So I can probably shoot out to about 40. Um, so I expect some travel like that, some travel like this. But seeing this trail, I didn't want to move on. This trail is hot. I mean, it'd be nice if I had a tree about where this one is that I could get into right here. And I could shoot that at uh, 30 and shoot all the way to that end, but there just isn't a tree and there's no way to do it on the ground. But uh, by the amount of sign in here, I'm really hopeful that a buck will come out. Hopefully, it's the one James saw this morning. It probably is. He was, uh, if you see that van going by, that is about three quarters of a mile away. That's where he was when that buck came running in here. And this is the first bed in here and he came in in the morning. So I'm hopeful he's here right now. Now based on the amount of sign at that spot, I thought for sure I'd see deer, but I did notice the sign was dry. The rubs weren't tacky, the scrapes weren't fresh, they had leaves laying in them. It almost seemed like it abruptly stopped. 
But man, it was a lot of sign. That buck had to be in there somewhere. I did hear a deer come through in the island in front of me and pass by at about 70 yards, but never got a glimpse of it. So I felt like I needed to make one more move in a little deeper. You can start to see this series of beds under every single tree like this that's in a row. It's all beds. Then you come and you look close enough here, and you see hairs in here. See that? Look at the bedding. So they're, they're bedding all of these trees, every one of these trees that's out here. And again, that's isolated by water, they're surrounded by water and cattails. And when these cattails are green, see how high they are? This is a wall of them. They got a hole here, it's like a cave, a dark, cool cave. You know, they can be laying up under the brush. Look at it, all mowed down. Right in, the, right in the leaf cover of that brush, up under there. We found this spray here. And this is a little closer to what we were just looking at. And it's got all these branches broken off here. And we already know from scouting that 100 or 200 yards that way, probably more like 200, maybe three, mm -hmm. that way, there's a lot of really good sign coming from this direction. So this might be a better area to set up close to that, all those beds. Um, because getting in there close just doesn't look like a good option. Yeah, I agree. We went out to this point over here. We liked the tree over there. We looked at some bedding up in that brush. See that brush over there? That's the bedding that wasn't all that great. Just some old beds from like a two-year-old. Then we went out in the cattails and where the beds were isolated by water, we found big buck beds. But we came in around here over here, we found buck buck beds that way. And there's a good run coming in here and a good run coming in here. And this is where they meet. And earlier we found that scrape here. And it turns out that that right. scrape mm -hmm. is where all the bedding areas meet. It's like a bed scrape. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking all the big bucks are coming to that scrape and working that scrape right here. Now we struggled with a tree here because trying to cover that trail and these trails is kind of tough and there ain't a lot of trees. We ended up picking up this popular tree here and when we have a wind coming this way, we can get up into there, shoot that trail and shoot these trails. And this is probably the only tree over here that would work. We went back and forth. This is probably it, right? For certain. The, ne the next huntable tree that makes sense with the sign coming together is probably 80 yards away. And you might just be just out of the yeah, game. Yeah, and you'd be we missing some of the deer. This one yeah. will hit every deer that comes through here. Right, I think this is a really good setup. Mm -hmm. I, I like this. I like this a lot. I mean, you have all the backdrop cover. You have cover right in the tree that you're in. And I mean, there's a nice little opening in there. Yeah. I don't even think you would have to hardly cut anything out. Yeah, I think we could just get up there and uh, a nice shot down to there yeah. over here. And we're within feet of the scrape. Anything going to that scrape is going to come within range of us. 100% that's a tree. There's no question. This is a spot I scouted in spring with Eric. And uh, there was a huge scrape right here that we found. And all the trails came in from all the bedding and met there like a bedding scrape. I really don't see the scrape right now. At least not yet. But that branch that that's hanging down is all rubbed up really high up and there's a heavy trail coming out of this bedding and there's trails coming out of that bedding going this way and I had to come through that tangle of cattails and there's just cattle trails through there the only trouble is is there's potentially some bedding downwind it didn't look that great in spring but coming through there now it did and uh, a lot of fresh beds in there and there's even more stuff down further and when I got right here I heard a deer get up and jump a couple times, but there's a lot of deer back here. Was it the target animal? I don't know. This we'll find out. This is my tree right here. I'm going to get up there. I'm going to try and be able to hit over there, down in here and back in there. i got to be able to weave an arrow through these cattails, and as you can see, they're like you know, eight feet tall. But I think it's doable. I just get as high as I can where I still have a shot. It looks like the main trail is behind me here, which is good. All right, I'm all set up. Got the wind in my face, pretty good. There's a lot of beds in that when I spring scouted, but there's not much of a chance to lay on that. There's way more bedding up here, so I'm just gonna let my wind blow that out. But uh, man, that's our massive amount of trails coming out of this bed in front of me and sign. 
And then you got that big raw breakdown here. Uh, yesterday, I was sitting back there about four or five hundred yards at the edge of this thick stuff. And uh, I heard one go through at closing time, breaking some branches. When I got over to where I heard it, man, there's some massive trails going through there, but I didn't see the immediate buck sign. I see over here. I mean, uh, that over there is just tore up, coming out of there, down here, and right to that rub. There's also sign coming off at this point, coming out of that bedding back in there, where the willows are mixed with the cattails. I don't know, I think I'm in them. It's just a matter of if this is where they're bedded. There's a lot of spots in here that could be, and they could be just off of here for, you know, 75, 100 yards, and you won't even know it. One thing's for sure, there's a good one in here somewhere. Okay, so we got to a point where it kind of funneled together, but we really couldn't find a tree you could hunt out of. Not without mm -hmm. s screwing this whole thing up. And we do got some really good setups on the other side of that, which is the Rut Island. I do think those deer will probably get that far in daylight. We are looking at this tree right here as maybe a backup. There's a grassy area in here where we can shoot, and most of the trails come within range of that tree. So I think we're going to look at that lone tree there. Um, the problem with it is some of the shots are going to be like 30 yards. Oh, he's been here. My hunch is right. Look at that. That is one big branch to be broken like that. That takes muscle and antler. So that's right. He's up in here too. So I think he's living right here. It's just a matter of cutting him off. I got a short window of time and then uh, pheasant hunters are going to be in here. So I'm really trying to figure something out here with that some pretty big uh, beams only trouble is it's old it's dried up but look how big around that is man I'd have a hard time breaking that with my hands and he did that with his neck muscles that's a that's a big buck I'm sure that's the one we've been looking for at a 10-pointer there's another uh, big scrape here right where trail goes through the cattails and uh, I'm kind of looking at the onyx and I can see the trail coming through here. And uh, I've been following it. The trail comes out of some trees over there. I think that's gonna be my next try. This comes into all the sign that's back here. Oh my gosh, look at these rubs. I didn't even see that going the other way. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Holy crap, moly. That's as big around as I am. Way up as high as my head. Look at the tines are hitting up here. That's over six feet. That one, that one. Oh my gosh, the one over there. Geez, this is where I heard that deer go through the other night. It's almost tempting to sit right here. But I think if I get to those next trees, that might be the spot. The only trouble is, none of this stuff is tacky. Actually, that one looks a little bit wet. Yeah, that doesn't look that old. Oh my gosh. Look at this. That's almost to my neck. And look at these, I mean, oh my gosh. The buck that's doing this is serious. Yeah, I don't think I can sit right here. I think I have to make a move forward. I'm gonna get to those trees as quiet as I can and set up there. But man, the buck that's doing this is a shooter for sure. Three sticks up a willow. I can reach the stand. That's what I need to be though. This little opening in the, in the cattails. I think what these deer are doing, these big bucks, is when they come through these cattails, they're using these grassy openings to travel. I don't think they're going through the nasty, thick, heavy cattails like the does and the small bucks. I think those big bucks are going through this stuff and the sign shows that too. So I got right into a channel where a whole bunch of that comes together where in spring I found a bunch of bedding. It's taking a little bit of a gamble because there's a lot of sign on that island over there. With those huge rubs right in that point but those trails come from over here and this is kind of risky but this is usually underwater 
and this year it's dry and there's going to be pheasant hunting opening up in a week and I perceive those pheasant hunters getting back here. So I'm getting real aggressive trying to get this bucker. just got set in the stand. I literally just pulled my ball and I heard something breathing in the cattails. Kind of like a, a light cough. Like maybe it got some uh, cattail dust in its uh, nose. So I quick got the camera moving on. I can hear it walking towards me. And by the time I got the camera on, it was walking out at 10 yards. And it literally walked right underneath me and fed. up and actually more like two sticks I guess I got my sticks right on top of each other I'm uh, I would say I'm about nine feet off the ground and it was right there I gotta wear blaze orange today because it's uh youth gun season We got that tree line coming out here bedding, right? And we got this bedding filtering out this way, where it's just random trees out in cattails with grass, right? And there's brushy spots under, and there's beds under all of this, right? For about this 10 acres. But it connects over here to this tree line that's going over this way. It kind of dead ends at, at the other end, right? So we know, that, and there's a lot of heavy trails coming out here, so I'm assuming there's bucks bedding all through that, coming down this way. And then you look this way, there's a tree line going that way, like an island. Right? Mm -hmm. Everything comes together right here. And where it comes together is where I'm going to expect there's like a social gathering kind of thing. We look for some scrapes, there's some rubs in here and stuff. And we can find that right in here. I think this could be a really good union of where everything kind of comes together from all this bedding. And then you have to look and see, well, how can you hunt it and what wind? Where can we blow off where there ain't no trees coming out of here? So what wind would you need? But we got to get in there and look at that first. But I do see from a distance, I see everything coming together, right? like in that patch of trees right there. When we scouted this area, I didn't pick an exact tree. I just kind of looked the area over. There was so much sign, it was kind of confusing. and You kind of have to go in there and look at where the sign is at the time you're hunting. And I really wasn't too sure I'd get back there. I mean, it was nearly a two mile hike and half of it would be through really nasty, dense stuff. And you'd have a high chance, high likelihood of spooking the deer getting back there. But it did have a lot of potential with bedding and mature buck sign. I got back here about a mile and ran into a guy in a tree. And it's real close to where those big rubs were I saw it yesterday. So I decided to really go for broke. That guy's hunting back here too. 
and I went way, way back. I'm like two miles in, and I think I found a, just a mother load. If I didn't make too much noise, noise getting in here, there is buck sign back here like crazy, and it's fresh. There's trails everywhere. There's a network of trails. This is where the cattails finally end, or gets grassy, but coming through those cattails was pretty noisy. I don't know if I spooked anything. don't know if I didn't. But if I didn't, I would think they're going to show up here. This is where everything kind of meets. I think I got a good shot tonight, but I got to kind of go for broke with another guy back here hunting that we didn't know about. Generally, nobody would get back here because this is underwater. And you got to walk through water for a long ways. But this year, there's a drought, and there's no water back here. And guys are getting back here. So it's go for broke time. Oh, I wanted to show you the setup. I'm two sticks up, here's the stand. I've got where there's a crotch where I can kind of blend in. It's a main trail here. There's a real heavy trail over there. A whole bunch of trails meet right there. It's kind of a bottleneck where there's enough grass to travel through here, but uh, still, uh, you know, concealed enough to hide a deer. There's also a little opening over there that's gotta have a heavy trail in it. So uh, based on my spring scouting, this is exactly where the buck lives. It's just a matter of if we spooked him coming back here. It was a little bit of an aggressive move, especially with no wind today. I came in on this trail, so I don't expect anything to come behind me, but I do have a shot through there if I need to. But there's a lot of trails coming through this stuff too. I can see a real heavy one going around right through there, over to there. That one is super heavy. As long as my wind ain't hitting over there, it seems to be going this way. A lot of stuff meeting up here, over here. Uh, Pretty aggressive move. I remember when we were back here scouting, those bushes had some really big beds underneath them. I don't know. I heard something big out here somewhere. If I didn't spook it, there's a good chance that it comes by tonight. We'll see. It's gonna be hell getting out of here. I mean, I'm literally back about two miles and about half of it I pushed through cattails without much for trails. <laughs> I can't believe we put ourselves through this for deer. No deer were seen on this hunt either. Probably spooked them going back there. You know, this area gets a lot of pressure. It's a hard hunt. I mean, we got great genetics, so we grow the occasional giant buck, but it's a hard hunt. There's a lot of people in this area, a lot of pressure. It just it's not Iowa, it's not Kansas. You know, it's it's a whole different ball game. But, you know, if the past has taught me anything, that if I just keep hitting these spots, keep trying and keep moving around and keep working at these deer, eventually I'll hit the right spot and the right day and it'll work out. But it certainly isn't as easy as some of you might have been perceiving by watching just the scouting videos. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope it was a little bit of an eye-opener that it taught you a little something. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks. See ya.